I love it. All right, hello and welcome, welcome. We're excited to be back. This is week four, if I'm correct, thinking in my head. Yes, week four here of our NJC AAE conference. Some of you were with us last night where Overwatch team was able to pick up two wins in the NECC category. So they're looking to try and continue on that momentum. And not only do you have me here with you today, but you've got Zero who knows a whole lot more about Overwatch than I do. So it's going to be a blast. Zero, thanks for being with us. Imagination is the essence of discovery. All right. Uh, looks like, sadly, we were not able to take map one. I didn't get to watch all that much. I was busy trying to fix our difficulty here. I think you got it all situated out. I think I figured it out. Yes, looks good, sounds good. So yeah, like, like Zero was saying, we, not able to get the first point right there uh, and actually not even able to capture it at all as Finger Lakes <laughs> was extremely skilled at being able to take the capture the point and just go ahead and get all 100% without letting the chokers come back on it so yeah they put up a really good defense here. there yeah am I quiet at all for you no you sound good in my headphones okay Make sure because I can't hear myself that well in my headphones. Well, it looks like they were able to take the point there early. 
We went for a bit of the uh, Symmetra quick teleport strat. But it looks like it didn't work out too much on this map. Probably going to try and regroup here. We'll see if they take the flank or the main path. Oh, looks like they got flanked a little bit by Yeah, it looks like their Doom is doing a bit of flanking. He's pretty known for that. I know listening to uh, Savast, he's not a huge fan of Doomfist. Because every time <laughs> they play against a Doom, he flanks around the back and takes out the healers, which typically yeah. is him. And it and is a, a good position to be at as the other team is if you can get all their healers down and you keep your healers too, then you're at a huge advantage there being able to take the fight to the other team. It's like they're going to extend really far, keep them back in the spawn here. It looks like Orblin was able to do a little bit of damage there with the barrage. Is it going to be enough for the chokers to be able to recap point though? I do not know. They still got three up. The hack on Doomfist is very good because all of Doomfist's damage comes from his abilities. His base attack is useless. Yeah, and so yeah, being able to make Orblin, it so he use the ability was... Looks like he took out probably the two of their there. healers. Yeah, that's huge for them. Well, they were able to catch the point before they got to 99%. So hopefully they can keep it to make up that deficit. For sure, and it makes it at least in the part where if they do lose point again, uh, they can at least have a chance to be able to try and come back maybe. The uh, falling into the pit is not what you like to see, Ooh. but luckily they were able to get out there. My goodness. Gonna go for a bit of a revive, but gonna get cut down by the horde of them that's on them. And so as, as Zero pointed out, they weren't able to get 99% so they're not able to just completely recapture and then cap it off. So Chokers have a chance here to be able to go and force overtime. Gonna try and watch out for the Doom, but he's gonna pick off Mercy. Orblin is gonna go into the point and get a 4k though. That means they're down to one healer and a DPS. The Doomfist did just kill himself in the well. He just altered himself in the well. So this could, this could be the little bit of an opening that Grace Harbor needs here. I think he's not happy based on his comment in the chat. <laughs> I did not see it. He, he said, uh, I'm depressed. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would be a little That is a feels bad too. moment. Definitely yes, not what you much. like to, to see happen there if you're trying to save the point. But that did allow the chokers to get back into the point. We're gonna see if they can hold it for the rest of the time. Taking out the Doomfist there early is a good idea. And they get the boop on the Roadhog right into the hole. Farah and Lucio is a god combo on this map because the point has that hole in it. Both of them have those area pushes. So it's really, it feels really good to get a, a boop into the hole kill. Oh, and here you go, this is gonna be Interesting to see if it comes to, into play as Barrage is already back here for Farah. Fast gonna try and see if he can get a little bit of a pick. I like it, I like the aggression. Looks like they were ready for Doom to be on the flank there. Probably were barrage. able to see him. Right here. Oh, and here comes the Barrage. Only able to pick one, one but Rias was able to take out both healers in that time. Yes. That was a really good reflected fire strike to the Fara. That was an amazing shot by that Genji. Yeah, that was a pretty good shot, but Fara was able to do just enough there to be able to get his team in position to go win it. So they tied up 1-1, which is a good sign to see. Zero, I would say that that was the uh, response that you're hoping for as a, as a Choker fan right there after the first cap. It was a really good response. I think we could have seen a similar happening if we were able to get to the point on that first map. Because that first map also has a bunch of holes. And we still had the same comp. But we just yeah. weren't able to push up. They were pretty spread out in that first map. But I think I think Great Harbor has found a little bit of a... Uh, little bit of a strategy maybe here against 
what they need to do against Finger Lakes as you got Sombra, who, who I'm watching on my screen, is, is running around, probably looking to try and see if they can uh, start to work against that Doomfist and kind of take him out of it. But Their Ryan is extending extremely player. far into the group. Wow. I, I would have never seen that coming. Early two picks is looking real good for the Chokers here Three. and with the Mercy. But we lost Orblin and a tank. Looks like we're we'll probably going to be able to take the point here. I think we're down one. Well, you got to revive on Orblin now. They did swap to McCree to try and counter a bit of that pharmacy strategy. Generally a good idea. And yeah, a Baptiste swap as well. You got to get as many hit scan characters as you can on your team. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised to, to see if Orblin sure changed. They have uh, McCree, Baptiste, and Sombra trying to all take out the pharmacy. Might go oh, use his barrage before he quits. Gonna have to shoot the immortality field. Looks like Sombra was able to take out the immortality field and he did quite a bit of damage on two of them. Extending a bit far into their spawn here. Gonna get hacked and down goes the Phara. But they were able to take the Rhine out. I imagine they're It'll gonna regroup here. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if he, if Orblin goes ahead and swaps over, because like you were saying, if he was thinking of that, that's probably why he overextended right there, was just trying to see how much he could pick off and then go get swapped. Looks like he is going to keep up Farah. He probably knows something we don't, I would imagine. I think it's I more mean, of the tactic of uh, don't fix what's not broken, right? Exactly. If, if, if it's... If it, if it, if it, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Gonna get a bit of a oh, revive up revive. on Orblin right yep. after they take him out. It's like they're holding this point very well. We know that Finger Lakes can can put an onslaught on and, and attack going, so I think it's gonna be important for the Chokers to get the 99 here so that they just have to win. Oh, gonna teleport time. away just in the nick of time before he gets headshot. That was a great alt by Reinhardt. It looks to me like they've popped three alts here. I would not be surprised to see them take the point here. But if we can keep them there for a long time, Winston is pretty good at stalling because of his bubble shield. Nobody can really get behind him. They can just get on him. But they are going to take the point. We are at 99. This is still in a good place. We just need to regroup. And Mountain Assault and you, do, and you do have Farah and Winston all ready to go. And we've seen how effective the Farah alt has been so far with the Barrage. So we'll see if that comes into play. Sombra's going for a pick on the healer, but it doesn't look like they're going to get away with it. They did get their alt, though. That could be very pivotal. Because if, if you can get a Sombra in on that point where all of them are and alt, it blocks all of their abilities for a while and hacks them out of any just alt. Got just like that, alt like their Sombra Wow. You could hardly even tell what happened there. Everybody just died in split seconds. Uh, the McCree did all, but he was not able to pick any off. Yeah, I believe Rias to took out frack. two there, and Orblin yep. took out the rest with his alt. Victory. Yeah, you had a really impressive alt combination right there where Rias came with a fracture and just stunned everybody, got a couple of pins, and then uh, Orblin's here, I'll, I'll pick up the rest with my barrage. Is This might be the play of the game, actually, what just happened there at the end. No! I believe this is when he took out both healers, yeah. The combination of the Reinhardt and the Farah alt there did not spell well for them. Man, yeah, so you get an impressive showing. Uh, especially, we, we talk about it so many times where it is hard to come back when you lose the first round. Uh, in that one of the best of three right there on that first map, it's hard to bounce back, but the Chokers say, you know what, we're up to the task, and they are, and they're able to come and get the next two rounds, so it good was spot a really to be good response to match. <clears throat> and so, un unlike, uh, unlike the NECC, which we've been hanging out with in the last couple of, I think actually, has Overwatch had three NECC matches this week? Yeah, because we had to reschedule one. 
one on Monday too, yeah. So uh, we've been hanging out in that world where the maps are chosen for you uh, and ready to roll the whole time. Uh, this one, we have to go to where they're gonna actually go, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Zero, but the losing team gets to choose which map of the three that are in the pool for this next mode that we're going to, which will be the hybrid game mode. And then the winner will get to choose if they start on attack or on defense. Yeah, that's right. It looks like okay. they're moving to King's Row is what their choice is. And I think we're staying on the same side. Perfect. Lovely. That's what I like to see. Looks like they're going to swap so, out a couple of their players. They do have a large lineup in the lobby right now. Probably the most yes. amount of players I've seen in in uh, an Overwatch lobby in this league anyway. For sure. And, and you love it, uh, where Grace Harbor is running. I think we've got... We've got eight on the roster, um, but two of them are really just there to make sure that we can get our matches in as I'm over here pressing buttons and, and deafening my, my headphones. Uh, but basically just there to make sure if anybody has something come up. We, we run with the six mainly as our starting lineup that you see there on the board, but over across the way for Finger, Finger Lakes, I think that they had, if, we, if I remember correctly, they had 10 on their roster, uh, which would make sense because they've yeah. got four more in the spectator slot getting ready to uh, watch and hop in as I think we're getting two that are coming in as a substitution. And then they've got their two that are casting on their side. Uh, so we're doing a, I think we're doing like a, a casting battle. I can't remember which way. Is this is this the way that I look at you on the screen? It is. Yeah, okay. I think I'm, I'm I this have, way. I always have to remember, because on my screen, it's to the right, but it's actually to the left Yeah, I feel like we should swap them, because it's also the same way for me. <laughs> I'm looking to the right, but you're to the left. I love it. But yeah, I mean, is there, what did you, what, what did we see there that really made the difference? I mean, because... Finger Lakes took the first point uncontested. Like, we weren't able to get anything on them. And then all of a sudden, Grace Harbor turns it around and says, hey, I'm going to take the next two. Well, I didn't get to see a whole ton of the first match. But I imagine the pharmacy swap was a really good swap there. I don't know what we had originally. I think we had Reaper instead of yes. uh, Orblin and Fara. But I think that swap might have made the difference for him. You saw they kept it, even though they had the uh, counter comp, and it worked fine. So we'll see if a similar thing happens for this map or not. Yeah, it, it would be great to see that, obviously, uh, from the from the perspective and bias of the Chokers. We would love to see the Chokers be able to come out and, and stay strong again. Uh, but we did talk about, at the and Zero brought it up, at the end of that last round, they started to, to swap a little bit in and get some of their hit scans and all that kind of stuff in there. So that could be interesting. And it could be interesting on King's Row here to see, uh, as we already know, it looks like on my screen, Orblin is actually playing McCree. So we do not have pharmacy going. So we'll see how comps come into play. King's Row is a pretty typical pharmacy map on attack. I've seen it some on defense, but also if you can hold the defense really well on that first choke point and don't let them through, that also works really well. I think that's what we're going for based on our Reinhardt here. I'll swap over to game. Yeah, so if I see correctly, we got so Riz on Reinhardt, you've got Diva for comms, which is typical, uh, Maya for Tobias, you got Bastion for Fast, McCree for Orblin, and then Lucio for Crunchy. Yeah, it looks like we're using May to try and block out that wall there. Typically, with May, you like to let one through like this and then block them off and just take them out. So we get the early pick there on the Reinhardt. Looks like they're going to go for the res, lose the Mercy, but they did get through with the res. McCree is a bit of a hot target. It's typically good to take out one when you see him. They can do a lot of damage by reflecting the DPS. Man, it seems like the Chokers are really starting to step their game up on their target focusing, where you can see basically yeah. four or five of them focusing on one one player at a time. They were able to right there. push the point really well, but got blocked out immediately by the Chokers' defense. I think we're just trying, starting to see the, the Chokers to click again in communication and in their gameplay and all sorts of stuff. Maybe we should play four games a week more often. Yeah, I guess they got enough practice. Good oh, pick in the back there and McCree. the Mercy pick. They took out both healers there. I think that's a worthy trade to lose one DPS. Yeah. Their Reinhardt, Reinhardt ult is going to be very good there. That maze invincibility is just 
great for blocking out time on the point. Though I don't know if they were able to save enough time. They're probably going to take at least two ticks here. We might I'll see the McCree see. ult to try and stop him. But it's probably smarter to save it. I was going to say, typically you see the chokers go ahead and give that up and just move to the next choke point and see if Good they can catch Good two them. picks there, but they are going to lose the point. McCree's going to try and clean up the rest of the team. Leaving them with just a healer and a tank. But their spawn is moved up now, so they're going to be a lot closer on respawn. Normally, the cart after being capped will always make it to this little gateway. Sometimes you see it stop here for a while. I believe we're going to try and hold it. Good pick on a healer, but their Reinhardt's all is back up, as we saw last time. It is what lets them take the point. Genji is deadly against McCree's. If you can reflect that stun especially, but it looks like we were able to keep the point for a while. I don't know how much longer we're going to hold out with our spawn being further back. May is just going to stall there, wait for the rest of her team. But it looks like we're going to hold back, regroup at the next choke. I think that's one of the most valuable things that you see from Bay, especially here on defense. Is, as you know, it's it's also a race against the clock and against the other team in their clock. And so, just a little bit of delay. Was going that they for a bit of a cheeky create. flank there, but I believe that he was spotted by their Genji. So when he peeked out, they all knew he was going to be there, and then you focus fire on him before he was able to make it back into the, the line. I think that ult got eaten by their Diva based on the fact that none of them are frozen here. Their Genji and Reinhardt are just absolutely killing us. Ooh, Diva 3! 3 HP, but with her defense matrix, any projectiles just get eaten up, so she's gonna survive. Probably trying to keep her alt. We're gonna go for a bit of a Diva v Diva action up here. Genji's gonna go provide defense though. Tobias swapped him back to Sombra, probably gonna try and hack their Reinhardt. That Diva ult might provide. Ooh. Looks like nobody died from the Diva ult, but trying to run away ran into some enemies there. Another Reinhardt ult. Couldn't tell if you got the hack off on the Genji, don't believe so, but that would have been very nice to see. We do have a couple ults, but I don't know that we have the time to be able to get there. Looks Ooh. like not. Their attack on the cart there was ruthless. Yeah, so once they were able to finally break through the defenses of the chokers and get that that first capture point, they were pretty impressive getting that payload through. The best thing we could do here would probably be to sweep as much as we can to get more time on the clock than they have. Because I think we were able to take up about half of their total time. Yeah, I think, if I remember correctly, last night when we had our NECC game, uh, our opponent was able to push it through with like five minutes left on their timer. So at least we're in a situation, but it is still a little bit difficult a situation. You're going to have to step up your game here. King's Row is one of my favorite maps, though. I think it's built really well. Because I, I feel like there's not really not one spot. Most maps have one spot where all of the fighting happens and you really get choked up. And then if you make it past that, you are pretty much golden. That said, there are some alts and stuff that can keep you stopped. But I think King's Row does really well at keeping a lot of different choke points. Like the first one is this one right here. The second one, the point itself is hard to defend if you're 
like pushing the point. Once you've made it past here, if you haven't taken out their defense well enough, you don't really just get the point for free. Like we can see right here, we're taking a lot of deaths right on that hole. Because if you push through, you just get shot by everything that's there. A little bit different of a strategy than we've seen from the chokers in the past. A lot of times we see them go with a Symmetra and going with that teleport uh, tactic to go right off the top of the statue and see if they can drop in, but different comp here. I believe that's kind of what I was talking about though, because you can push a Symmetra to the point, get everybody on the point, but that point is still easily defended on this map. Right. So getting to the point isn't as free of a win as it would be on other maps. I mean, there are some maps like uh, Paris, which are banned competitively because they are so bad for that. If you can get a Symmetra to place a portal to get you past that choke, there's no way to defend the point as a defender. You're just screwed. That's one of the reasons that that's, that map is not allowed, is because it's just not balanced. While I was talking about it though, we were able to wipe most of their team. It looks like we're going to get at least two ticks here on the board. We'll yeah, see if they come in I to defend with some alts. We can see Reinhardt. No, nope, he's going to get hacked. Going to be able to pick up the third tick there, and now we just have we to push nice. it. I thought we were going to be in trouble when uh, our Orblin, our Ash, lost this battle with the Genji. Looks like we're extending pretty far here. Don't know if we have anybody on the cart currently. We do now. Orblin has gone back to the point. But we are going to lose a healer. They're going to be down one as well, and a tank. Got that Genji in her room. This is not a good place to have a Genji, I will say. Versus a Winston, anyway, whose entire attack is just AoE in front of him. You do not want to be stuck in a hallway. Swinging his arms. <laughs> Same with a Reinhardt. I would not want to be stuck in a hallway with a Reinhardt. That's just bad news. Absolutely not. Yeah, the, the good thing for the chokers is, like you were talking earlier, we, we lost our, our Ana heal. We lost Vast a little early in that last fight. Um, but both Vast and Crunchy are phenomenal healers for the, the team. The great so use Crunchy of Sombra's invisibility here just to gain information. Great yeah. ult. I think she got five of the six of their team with that hack. Should be able to push through this door fairly easily. They're down four. Almost a team kill, but I think some of them respawned in time. Yeah, like I was saying though, if we if we continue to just push push, we're already up a minute 30 here. So as long as we can get it to that yeah. end point, we can have a good chance of taking the next round with more time. It looks like this is probably going to be an, an offensive battle to the end. Good ult by their Rhine there, looks like he was able to stun four. Possibly five. Gonna take out a healer, a tank, and a DPS. Not looking good for the chokers here. Probably gonna stay back and regroup. No reason to trickle in when you have everybody dead. They're gonna get some ground. The cart's gonna move back a little bit. Trying to push out with the Reinhardt ult. I think he decided against using his ult there because of the two picks they got early on. Ana is a bit of an interesting choice with our current team comp. I think they might go for a Reinhardt boost. We'll see if when he looks like they popped off three alts there. Ooh, yeah. We're gonna take him out. That puts us in a better place though, because I think we're still three alts up. Like I was saying, I think if we push up, get that Reinhardt alt, Ana boosts the Reinhardt. Boosted Reinhardt is a scary, scary thing because of his hammer. There's so much damage. Gonna get blocked by the shield though, and they're going to reverse the hammer. 
Another two alts come out for their team, and they're going to wipe out the chokers again. They're holding a very strong defense here. They were able to get a team kill. Good news for the chokers is, is I think that they're out of alts, and then we're going to have Winston, Ana, and here in a second, you're going to have alt going here for Orblin and Symmetra. We're going to power up the Winston. That's a weird play. Normally, you see them power up with Reinhardt. But it is going to push them back enough that they might be able to get some ground on this part here. Looks like they're down or up four now. Still the Genji causing some issues to the side. They're going to get the... Both Diva out of mech. people left, but they're going to be able to respawn and get back to this cart here before we're able to get it to the end. Maybe they've gotten some alts from that push as well. If we see another Reinhardt ult, that might be bad news for us. He has been very good at hitting those on most of our team. Ooh, big plays by Orblin in the back. Their Diva was able to take out one of our healers, though. Looks like if we could get a perfectly timed Reinhardt ult here. Ooh, almost got booped off the edge of the map by that Diva's push. Gonna mount a big defense here as I don't want them to reach the end, but there's not much you can do when you have to come in close range of a Reinhardt. Still got its ult up. Genji was able to take out two of our squishier people in the back. And it looks like we're going to be able to cap the cart there with one minute. They are up two minutes. It's not what you'd like to see for us, but I think that we stand a good chance here. As long as we can take that first point quick. I believe we're going to move back to defense first. Oh, looks like we're starting on attack. Attack commences in 30 seconds. How are you bypassing device fireballs? I think we're going to keep the same comp we just had. We are going to swap to the Symmetra, though. We'll see if we do our typical strat of placing a portal. I believe for this map they go for the uh, portal on the statue, is what they do. I think I saw them do that last time. Five, yeah. Four, it is a bit of a two, good strat because I, I would never see it coming. Just heroes dropping from the top of the statue while I'm watching. Oh, maybe not. Possibly going to go... I heard the teleport placement, but I didn't see where it went. Just using it as a flank, possibly? They were able to push through that first door really quickly. Oof. Fast gonna get picked off right there by the Hanzo. We were able to take out both of their healers, though. That puts us in a pretty good place, as long as we don't take a lot of damage here. Zarya's very powerful if she gets her uh, shield charge up there. The Chokers were really aggressive there. They really wanted that point because they don't have much time to play around with. It did pay off for them. They still haven't gotten this Hanzo who's behind them. That could be a bit of an issue if he uh, picks off one of their healers in the back. Down to 10 seconds, 5 seconds left. So they're going to have to stay on the cart the entire time. To push it as far as they can. Ooh. A lot of back and forth. Back it's like we're forth. down. Might be even teams right here right now. We gotta make sure not to leave the cart. It looks like they're gonna go for the wrecking ball just to push us off the cart. Might end up paying off for him. Not quite. Was able to take out Svast though. Being down a healer is not Lucy what you want in this situation. Lucy was gonna go back and use her speed. We boost. almost lost the cart there. As Sombra was invisible Ooh. and Calms took one step away, I saw it reach. 
like three fourths of the way down on overtime. That was not good news. Hanzo Alt is probably going to push off the cart pretty well. Looks like the Reinhardt was able to stay on. Going to be a bit oh, tough to stay on. Yeah, it looks like they are going to push us off. We did get over halfway to the next point with zero seconds left on the clock, though. So that could be good for us if we can hold a good defense on this point. So it's not a it's not an undoable task here for the chokers, but like we talked about with with three minutes being on the clock there for Finger Lakes, it's going to be uh, much easier for them to be able to try and get to that point than it was for the chokers. And you can see a little bit slower of a push possibly from them too. Yeah. Well, when you put it in perspective, we were able to keep on that cart for another minute and a half. So technically, we had two and a half minutes to their three. But if they do the same, that does not put us in a good place. We're probably going to look to hold this point as much as we can. It's a bit of a strange comp to see Symmetra and Sombra together. But it might end up working out. Like they were able to pick off Sombra early. Orgrim did see one on the flank, but can't really worry about that right now. Gonna try and take out their healers here. Not quite gonna pay off. Maybe get the Reinhardt. Woo! This is going fairly well so far. Good first push. Not quite able to get the Ana. Oh, gonna go back and finish her off. Just down to the hog left. Not much you can do when there's people everywhere around you. Oof. Pretty good defense by the Chokers, but really good defense there by Orblin. My goodness. Yeah, I've seen him. Uh, he used to play a lot of Farah early on, but recently he's been swapping a lot to Symmetra, and it's been paying off really well. Looks like they are going to get to the point. Going to all three of them. Gonna try and take out their back couple. They're probably gonna be able to get most of the point here before we get people back. It's like Tobias really is hoping we're gonna get people back. Their Genji is, is looking for him. Gonna hold it right at the last second of that point. Trying to get him off. We still have it contested by one. Oh, but we lost it right at the last second before we got people back. They do only have a, a minute and there. 20. We were yeah, able to push it for at Sombra. least a minute and 20. So they could get right to where we got to. It would be very interesting to see it down to the last few seconds right on that finish line. Sombra going to go use her intel or invisibility to get some intel here. see a lot on the side of this building. I think they're just trying to get in a good spot here. Gonna hack the Reinhardt. Really good hack. We're able to take out the Reinhardt and Savas took out their other Ana. Gonna get the Reinhardt back up though. We weren't paying attention to that Mercy. Not quite able to get the hack off before the hammer comes. Looking fairly even right now. Mercy would be a good pick to get. you like to see that. Down to 17 seconds. As long as we're able to keep them off the cart for these last 15 seconds, this is a win here. Genji alt with the nano boost coming out. Going to do a lot of damage. Nano blade is a very yeah. powerful strategy. Woo. Now we're just down to overtime. If we could just do anything to keep them off the cart. Might see Winston alt? Not quite. Going to get taken out. 
Winston oh, Alt no, is pretty good for two. keeping people off the objective. Because if his uh, swipes knock people back. I don't know we're gonna we're look gonna to really keep time. him here. I think we should get back in time, but if we lose too many people early, it's not gonna be good for us. They are gonna have a lot of alts to play with here. Looks like they're gonna make it, yeah. Just oh. barely before we got on there. Great round, great defense, great attack. But yeah, man, what a what a good round all together there. Not a surprise. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see their Reinhardt get play of the game. He did some really good alts. Ooh. 18 Earth Shatter kills, 26 stuns. That's a lot. That is pretty impressive, but... It, it is it is going to be, and, and we talked about it at the very beginning, and, and we've seen it all week for the Chokers. They've had really great competition all week, have been in nitty-gritty games. They've gone to five rounds. They've gone to overtimes in a lot of their rounds, all sorts of different things. Uh, and so I, I'm not surprised to see that we're tied up 1-1 here, uh, and I won't be surprised to see if we get to map five here also, uh, possibly even in this situation. Are we over? No, because we still have an assault coming up, right? So we can't yeah. tie that one. And so there is, I mean, we've even still got the option on the table of possibly having to move to a map six and play the last control map that we have. Um, all yeah, sorts of crazy that, stuff. But yeah, back and back and forth, back and forth. Um, I think probably, as you pointed out, one of the biggest four finger lakes this round uh, was the play of the Reinhardt. My goodness. Their Reinhardt did really well that round. There was a lot of pivotal stuns. Like every time we grouped up, he just had alt and he would pop it and then it would lose the push. It was really good there to keep, uh, I think the Reinhardt almost single-handedly kept us from getting extra time there on that last point. Looks yeah, like we're gonna swap I, I to Hanamura. Definitely one of the Choker's favorite maps. I think they have picked it every single time they have an option. I don't yes, think we've even seen another so map. <laughs> I guess the yeah, only so assault will... map we played. <laughs> Chokers will get choice here, and they and they go to Hanimura, and then uh, it looks like we're gonna see what Finger Lakes is gonna come out and choose for attack or defense. I think pretty typically in this situation, correct me if I'm round zero, but a lot of times you're gonna see defense coming as the first one, uh, which I am correct. They just chose defense mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times I think teams like to try and go out and see if you can hold. The other team to like maybe just this much or not even capture a point yeah, or whatever, it puts and then it's less a quick pressure win on you if you can yes. hold that defense. Although I think the chokers do tend to do a little better on this map on attack than defense, so that could be good yeah. for us. I think I think we kind of see that in general with the chokers. We've got a we've yeah. got a pretty pretty solid attack, um, especially with the play of our DPSs, uh, Tobin and and uh, Orblin, but then also comes into the factor um our our tanks being able to set that front line and be able to absorb a lot of the damage coming so the dps kind of do their thing and then while doing that you get the great play of our back line with our supports and our healers going um we we were on the the big national stream last night and, and towards the end they they were singing the praises of our healers because yeah. without those without those healers you're not going to do the things that you're trying to do with either your tanks or your dpss um so fast and crunchy have been real crucial in that especially this kind of a little bit of a turnaround in the season here for overwatch it was we were starting to get to a point where it was kind of like ooh, we got to start working on things it was it was looking a little down and all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden like we kind of talked about this week they just kind of went oh light switch flipped and and they're running with it right now i love yeah. to see it i think our defense has really brought up especially with uh orblin playing symmetra now i think we've seen a lot better defensive plays because i think when we first started he pretty much only played those super offensive characters like Reaper and McCree and uh, Farah, even when defending and whatnot. But I think when we've seen that swap, he's really done well as Symmetra. It's uh, interesting to see. I think their coach has probably been telling him that kind of swaps. Because Sombra yeah, is, a, is, I... is interesting too, because we haven't seen Sombra all season. but right. Just... And, and I've noticed that with you too, is there's been a lot of 
uh, character variety, I guess, so to say, from a lot of our players. Um, I'm pretty sure, like you were saying, at the beginning of the year, uh, all six of our players, I didn't see a whole lot of variety and changing in comps or anything like that. I mean, it was basically uh, cr Crunchy was going to be Mercy. Svast was going to be probably either Bastion or Ana. Uh, you saw that we were going to have a Reinhardt and a D.Va, and then we were going to most of the time... <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Not Bastion. Not the <laughs> Bastion. Um, but yeah, and then you you most of the time saw a maybe like a Hanzo Reaper connection uh, with our DPSs. And now mm -hmm. it's like, man, and we could flip we could flip a coin to see what kind of comp we got going on. Yeah, I think they've really developed strategies for most maps already that they change their comp up based on the map. Yeah, and, and you're going to see a little bit of change in comp again here. Um, uh, yeah, we see we see Orblin go back to his roots here with with Reaper, so I'm excited to see a little bit of of, of the Death Blossom possibly come out, and make a big play. But uh, Lucio has has I think been a big thing for the Chokers too, is especially when you're not playing with that Farah, uh, you're not trying to go pharmacy with Mercy. Is, is Lucio has kind of been a, a big player there for Crunchyleaf. I think the next thing, the next step that I think our team is going to take is getting those uh, counter picks down. Because right now, I think we have great map strategy. As you can see by this teleport here, we're going to teleport in and rush right on the point, puts a lot of pressure on it. Great strategy, you see a lot of teams using it. But I think something we're a little weak in is the uh, counter pick area. I think we don't see a lot of uh, counter pick characters like. When we have a pharmacy against us, we don't tend to swap to hit scan like we would normally see. I think we're a bit stubborn in that side, but I I'm sure that's something they're going to grow on. For but, sure, and, and like we've talked about, we've already seen growth in the team, so I, I would expect to see that growth continue to come too. It looks like they were able to keep our defense away. They're going to try and regroup, probably go for the same strategy maybe a portal in a different spot we shall see oh, looks like we spotted their reaper behind gonna push him back into the group Ooh, we're able to get the portal up but their junk rat is going to take out two people immediately upon exiting that portal that's not what you want to see going into this it's like we're just diva up <laughs> but flew a bit off of the map. I think got pushed off by that Reinhardt, and they didn't really have enough charge to get back. Possibly just trying to get the respawn faster. I do know that they've been working on that, trying to be grouped up more and have, have their attacks more uh, synchronized and all that stuff. So I, I think that was possibly a play of, ah, yeah. you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get respawn. Better to kill yourself, get the respawn quicker, than try to keep the fight and die anyway, you know? Junkrat was able to take out, looks like we did swap to Farah, gonna mount a good attack here on the against the Chokers, push him back, they were able to take out Rias, not quite able to take out that Reaper as there is a Sigma behind him, gonna try and regroup up here again. Seems this team is well versed against the Symmetra teleporter strat. Looks like we did swap up the entire comp. We're gonna go for a more classical approach. We're gonna push the Alcorda. Pretty good alt combo there. It's a bit strange to see a Sigma comboed with a Reaper, but they were able to get the team kill. Because, you know, Sigma pushes them up into the sky, and then Reaper's on the ground. It's a bit weird to see him use Death Blossom while they're in the air above him, but it did pay off for them. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was trying to time it perfectly for right when they hit the ground to pick up the scraps, but like you said, whatever works, right? Yeah, I mean, it works. It's like we can hear Reaper behind our line. We weren't taking him out with like we're working on pulling back to try and get him out. Tobias was able to pick up three kills there. Gonna look for a fourth, maybe? 
we should push into the point here. They might trickle back to try and keep this point because there's only 8 seconds left on the clock. It might be better for them to push. But it looks like they're going to give the point so that they can regroup. Good strategy, not a bad idea at all. And that's the strength that we've talked about very, with Grace Like they're very, very well placed. Ellis there with that junk rat was able to wow. hit two air shots. Yeah. And then Crunchy has nowhere else to go because Farah died while she was crossing the gap. That's not what you like to see. Diva does have ult here. It could be interesting to see her throw this into the hallway. They've got some really well-built strategies here against our attack. I think they have a lot of experience with defense on this map. That's probably why they chose defense first. They've got their uh, Sigma Junk Rat in an angle where they can shoot down the hallway without having to see them to do AoE damage. And they're going to keep their hit scans behind the Reinhardt. Very, very well-mounted defense on that exact position. Plus, they have Junkrat being able to give them the information on the far side. I think they've got a lot of experience based on what I'm seeing here. They seem very familiar with how to defend. We're able to pick the Junkrat, but he's probably going to get a respawn before we're able to mount a sizable attack. Oh, he jumps over. A bit interesting to see there. Reinhardt's extending very far. Unfortunately, our Rhine is not going to get any heals there. They should be able to get both of these picks fairly easy. This is very, it's very strange to see. They're overextending so far. Like... We were able to push into this point here, ticks. almost get two ticks because they just pushed. Very strange to see. They are going to be able to keep the chokers off, though not quite going to be able to get the second tick. Able oh, to get Diva the mech back. back right on the last bit of HP. Going to try and get out of there. Don't think they're going to be able to make it. I think they might... Looks like they were able to get the Mercy buff, the Junkrat is still going to do enough damage to take out the mech again there. 60 seconds remaining. That's interesting that it said 60 seconds remaining when there was 25 seconds on the clock. Yeah, I think you it noticed 30. That? Did it say 30? Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, I thought it said 60 also. But... I thought it said 60, but I looked up at the clock and it says 20. Maybe I just misheard it, it said 30. To be. Not quite going to be able to get the point here. Oh, Comps is going to get killed. A uh, Reaper with her ult, or with her suit. She has ult. Gonna go for the usage of it. Gonna get another pick on the Reaper that just got oh. revived, but gonna get picked off immediately right after by the Rhine. Not a quite enough time, but good, good battle. Very good battle. They had a very good defense. Probably the best I've seen. Because I think we are a little stronger on that attack side on this map normally. So the fact that their defense is able to keep us back that well is impressive. Yeah, I think the key to the rest of the the rest of this map for the chokers is gonna be to try and stop them on that first point. I think if they're able to cap the first point, it's gonna be a really tough battle for the chokers to keep them under two ticks on this next one. Yeah, they're gonna to have to hope to keep that point for quite a while. Yeah, at the very least, we, we can't give up a quick capture here by them. Yeah. Time to kill. Reaper is just so edgy. I don't know. What's the point? <laughs> Time to kill. I'm not a psychopath. I'm a high-functioning psychopath. <laughs> I love it. The voice line is symmetric from Tobias. So yeah, um, 
on our attack, we had Symmetra on Tobias as well. It looks like we're going for the same comp. No, we had Crunchy swap to Brigitte. We're going to use... Uh, this strategy is an interesting one. I saw this like two matches ago where we have Crunchy just using her shield to three peek around the corner. And then when they push out, she's going to go for the stun immediately like that. <laughs> it's it's really cool to see that. It's it's kind of funny. Because she's just sitting in the corner behind the door there with her shield out. It just looks like nothing's it going seems, on. It seems to have worked pretty well for him again. Yeah, Tobias was able to take out, I believe, three there. And they did not make it to the point. It looks like they didn't go for the portal strategy, which you normally always see. At least in these matches. So I think their strategy works pretty well. It's more of a unexpected. Symmetra does a lot of damage there if she can do some oh, damage to the shield. Fist. Not quite going to get the Doom Fist. He's a very slippery one. I know when I play this game, I'm always I'm so difficult to get the Doom Fist. They just come in, use their abilities, and they just disappear. Looks like Orblin and Tobias are almost alone here, and we're able to keep back four of them with both of their alts used there. Good pick by Orblin to take off their other, their, their last one, their Reaper. And looks like we're going to be able to reset back to our original positioning in time. Oh look, Cr Crunchy's on timeout right now in the corner. Yep. And then when somebody comes through, then she's going to peek. Occasionally, occasionally she looks back to, to throw a heal or two. I missed the view, but I believe she got picked by the monkey there, the nano-boosted monkey. He was able to pick off three of them there. They did get the team kill. I believe they're going to get that first point. We weren't quite able to hold them off as long as we had hoped, but this point could be a good standpoint for us. They aren't going to have to cap the entire thing. They're only going to have to cap to one and a half bar or around there. And they've got four and a half on the clock. It's going to be a tough battle, but it's doable. Doable for the choker. I think we've seen it happen before on this map, actually. Yes. I think we had one match where they capped the first point almost effort effortlessly and then we held them back on this one for like the five and a half minutes or whatever it was. Ooh, nice Crunchy. Yeah, good two picks there by Crunchy. They were able to get some on the point. Hopefully they can get that off there before they mount a good attack. Reaper tried to get away there, not quite able, but he was able to pick Orblin before dying. Yeah, I think the advantage here for the defense is just how close that spawn is for him now. I think we're in a pretty dangerous spot trying to defend up here though, because if uh, one of them, say like a Reaper or you know, that Reinhardt, just run into the point, it puts them in a really bad spot. They get some free kick there. Hopefully Symmetra's power is going to be able to keep them back. Not white as it looks like we're just calm able to dodge the reaper all pretty effectively but they did get the first tick down orblin coming out to shut them out able to pick off five there sorry i missed wow. that but they did get the first tick that's going to put them in a really good spot they used a minute and 30 to get one tick they just need a half a tick left and they got three minutes Good news for the chokers is they are going to have Fracture from Rias, but the bad news with it is not a whole lot more coming closer. This is really bad because, yeah, that. <laughs> the Reinhardt is just going to rush into the point and get as much as he can and just try and put us in a spot where we have a lot of pressure on us. Ooh, they're going to take down four. It's not looking good here for the chokers. One left, yep, and they were able to finish off an amazing attack and defense there. Play of the game. Orblin's gonna get the play of the game. It's probably that 5k at the end that I missed. Hey, yeah, it so looks like it. It it all works out. We still get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
three. Only to show four in the cam, I think. Yeah, but there was a fifth right after that. Two death blossoms, yeah, nine that. kills is very good. That's wow. four and a half kills on average. So five yeah, kills in one, four kills in another. Impressive, impressive little play there. But yeah, now, now as we talk about, chokers are going to have their their backs up against. They're going to go down one, two here, going into the fourth map. I can't exactly remember fourth. It's not control because control will be fifth. Uh, uh, no, this isn't. Hybrid. I don't know. We'll see it. We'll see it here in a second. Um, oh, it, could it just the, be straight up payload? I think it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's payload. I think so. And That's so escort. That's yeah, so it's gonna be it's escort. Like we're gonna go so to Havana. Chokers, chokers, fair, pretty solid here in escort. Uh, you saw them do pretty well in in the hybrid game mode, especially when they got into the payload. They were able to push it through all the way one time, and then with only like a minute on the clock, get it halfway. Uh, so it could be a good spot for the chokers to be in, but they have to win here to be able to continue this game and get into that control point, which will once cool. again put them in a good spot to be because we won the first control. So if you're able to pull this off, you get confidence, you get momentum, uh, and get yourself in a really good spot game five. But I'm, I don't know, I know this Finger Lakes uh, team is pretty impressive. Last week we were on this map, I believe, we had a bit of a glass cannon strategy going on with uh, Bastion. Mm. It was, it was a very interesting uh, strategy to see, and it worked for at least the first two points, I believe, and then we swapped off. But yeah, uh, we might go for that same strat again. We'll see. If they, uh... Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bastion get pulled up again. They really like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, just, it's, it's pretty deadly when you can get them up on top of the payload and get them to to convert and transform into that turret and then uh, we saw the the double bubble go around them to be able to give them enough protection and just let bullets fly from behind them uh, so yeah i would i would not be surprised to see that for at least the, the first little bit um and see what we can get going here but yeah so we'll be like you said we're going to havana uh, just waiting to hear what finger lakes is going to go i'm assuming uh, as we saw in the last at least last map uh, they are probably going to choose defense once again, like you kind of talk. It, it just puts a little bit less pressure on you um, by having a good defense first. And you're going to have three swap outs coming for them. It's like Crunchy saying she's feeling a bit uh, nauseous currently. Well, it could be interesting. Well, Hopefully somebody... Like yeah, hopefully somebody gets her a bucket and don't do it if you, if if you're gonna spew, don't do it on your keyboard. Trust me, that's not a good spot for it to go. I think this could put yeah, us we'll in see. an interesting spot if they have a strong defense on this map. Yeah, definitely because uh, I think that and, and like we've talked about, defense is the thing that the chokers I think are going to continue to work on to get stronger at. If if there's a weak point in the chokers game, it would definitely be the defensive side of things. Because uh, it's not the offensive side of things like we saw there. Even with uh, 30 seconds left on the clock, they have all the capabilities in the world to be able to go and push a payload or, or cap a point or whatever it is uh, because they they really form together a pretty good offense. And so the defensive side of things is going to be the tale of the story here for them to be able to uh, figure out if they can continue to hang with this Finger Lake team. It looks like Finger Lakes is going to swap out half of their team they're changing three of the people they might have some uh strategy going on based on the map based on who plays i'm think yeah i'm thinking so too i'm thinking that uh they've got the, probably unlike you see the chokers play probably not a whole lot of uh flexibility with character selections they probably have certain people who play uh certain people and so when they on look at a map maps. and say all right we're gonna we're going to change our, our comp. Uh, maybe, hey, you're you're a, a Mercy main, so now you're in kind of thing. Yeah, they took kind of stuff quite stuff. a bit of time to choose a side there, so I think they're doing a lot of strategizing based on maps. Based on the Definitely. amount. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's a really cool thing to see. Yeah, and what did the... Oh, yeah, so it I looks like they are going to go defense. defense first, yeah. And they swapped out three of their members. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I would would love to yeah. have that flexibility we but could get that i many also people. love 
right? But I, I also love running with the six that we have. Uh, they continue to play with each other. They can continue to make that chemistry. Uh, they talked about it last night on their NECC stream. You didn't get a chance to watch that for sure. Go back and watch the VOD of it on their stream and everything. It was just, it's a really great production that they have and all sorts of things. It was just cool to be on the national stream, right? Uh, but they talked about the fact of the team that we played against yesterday from Western Colorado. Uh, they had nine players, well, they had 11 players all together and nine of them were categorized in a, in a flex position. So uh, probably like you're seeing from a lot of ours yeah. where... Yeah, where they're changing roles the whole time. We saw multiple players on their team actually start as a tank and then go to a DPS and then go back to the tank and all kind of stuff. Where here, uh, with our team, they are very specific in the roles that they play. You've got Rias and Comms as tank. You've got Tobias and Sfast, sorry, Tobias and Orblin as our DPS and then Sfast and Crunchy as our as our uh, supports. And so they continue to play with each other and play that way the whole time and build a lot of chemistry so they know kind of the ins and outs of which each other are going to do. I think we've seen a couple role swaps, but not many for our team. Me personally, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big uh, fan of changing roles based on map. Because, I, you know, I, I play Overwatch, and there's some maps that I feel like I'm just doing really bad on, and some that I feel I do really good with, like, you know, a Sigma or, you know, a different role. I think it's a really right. uh, cool idea that you can just, when they tell you the map, you can, you know, swap out a person based on who's better at that map and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. I would and, love and to like have that kind of ability. Uh-huh. And like you said, there, there are certain, there are certain uh, characters and, and, and ops that work well on maps that don't work well on other maps that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you can't play them well but they just aren't set up well to work on them uh like we talk about uh specifically you look at a farah main or, or using Farah as a dps if you're in a in a map that has a lot of close combat and a lot of close space and a lot of roofs too where you can't really get up and everything uh not a great place for them to be it doesn't mean that you're not a good far main it just means that that map isn't good for you for far so like you said uh, it could be that for that example, maybe somebody's a great far main, and then you get into a map where there's a lot of close combat, uh, and you're going to get them out and put somebody in there that's going to have good close combat, and and so on and so forth. Obviously, a, a doom fist I think would probably be a a good choice for close combat. Yeah, I uh, would not think we'd see a far on this map. That inside point is very difficult, not very open. A lot of walls that they can just chuck a splash damage at and it smacks down yeah for sure yeah so i like you were saying probably going to see hmm i wonder what um do you think we're gonna see a symmetra and if we do see a symmetra who's it coming as is it gonna be orb or is it gonna be tobias because <laughs> yeah, we've seen both of them play it, it. we have not seen though uh one one interesting thing and one thing that has been talked wonders about with tobias we haven't seen Hanzo yet, this, yeah. this match from him. Normally and he, he plays pulls a, out a Hanzo phenomenal and he plays really well. Hanzo. We might see that on this I love map. It. This I... isn't a terrible one for Hanzo, especially on this first point. It's pretty open, a good uh, lane for sniping. Yeah, and, and with payload too, and you're pushing that along, there's always going to be alleyways because it's got to have an alleyway to be able to drive on. Uh, so it, it could, yeah, this could be the one where it, we do see him go oh. back to Hanzo. Speaking of... I think we Boom. see uh, Tobias on Hanzo. We nailed it. And sure enough, just like we talked about, we're going to get a little bit of Bastion action here. Crunchy advertising her injury again. <laughs> right? And, and so, you viewers at home, I guess so, uh, that if you want the... If, if you want the, the, the deeds of Crunchy's <laughs> injury, you can stick around afterwards and hear about her battle with the back seat. She probably should have sent it before the match so that they get uh, disgruntled and off their game. Yeah. So here you go, sure enough, you're gonna get. Gonna pick off Bastion the Sombra up on top. early there. Yep, we did get the Bastion on the cart. I figured we'd see it. Let the bullets fly, baby! Oh, they're in such now. a weird order on the roster. Trying to swap through them is. 
really annoying. <laughs> Reedus is going to put up a lot of pressure on him there. Just push him way back. This card has not stopped since it started. It'd be really nice to see them push all the way to this first checkpoint without any contestion. They are going to get a Genji swap almost immediately. Probably a good idea for their part. That was the little tiny bit of con contesting they got there. One split second. Yeah, but the chokers were able to smock to just kind of get rid of that real quickly. So, good spot to be in. Watch your head there, Bastion. Good, good job. That's, do you get killed if you run into something that's too tall? I think you just Does get just like push bumped you off? back and off the car. Yeah. I sure hope you don't get killed. That that would be a funny way to go though. Oh, like the move that's too neat. Obviously, Chokers ran into a little bit of a choke point right there. But Rhys is able to pick off two in the time being and actually gives the Chokers a chance right back on. I'm taking care of you. I messaged him there. He was messaging me. Oh, what did, did he say? Yeah, he was asking if uh, one of my friends was asking if he could observe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I told Tell him about to my go stream. To the Twitch. Yeah, you can go to the Twitch. <laughs> I love it. I love the interest, though. It's great. But yeah, there was a big play from the Rias, and here comes the shots just in a flurry for Hanzo. Yeah, using my account on games, that's the one thing I worry about. There's Genji out there. He isn't going to take anybody out quite yet. Feel like he wasn't able to take any out before he got taken out. Rias has been killing him this match. I think this yeah, is just absolutely popping the up. third time. I can't remember, was there... Were they playing Sigma to start this map? Or did they change there to try and get rid of some of these projectiles that are flying away? I think away, they were playing in the... from the start. Gotcha. So now we, we talked about this. We saw this last week from the Chokers also. They get through these first two points extremely well, uh, especially with Bastion up there, and then got here with quite a bit of time off and then kind of got choked coming up around this corner on the bridge. So we'll see if they're able to kind of right those woes that they had last time. Ooh, big kill there from Calm. They have just been on this cart since it started, almost. It's looking oh, we've really got good in the time on department. Board. Genji's going to stall them out a bit on this point here, but I think he's the last one left to put up a defense there. Good ult from the Sigma. I think he was able to grab four there. Not quite able to grab kills with the ult, but it did stall them quite a bit. Going to get fast right back up after going down. Sigma did pro provide them enough time to get the rest of their team back, but Orglum's in ult, and he's going to take out both healers in one shot. Oh my goodness. Looks like the Genji was not enough. Sigma oh, tries so to eat close. some of the damage, is able to stun him. They're just going to keep trickling back to try and get them away from this cart. But I think we're going to provide a bit of a too strong of an attack here. As long as we can get this Wrecking Ball off. Yeah, I think Chokers are in a good spot here to finish it off, but they want to do it as quick as they can, and they're able to do so. Oh, thanks, thanks for the finishing kill right there, Orphan. I appreciate it. But we talked about it. It's all about how you can respond here uh, in this game, and I would say that dropping those last two rounds, that was a pretty good way to respond at the beginning of Escort here. Very good first push there. I figured they'd choose defense because they had a strong defense strategy, which they might have, but maybe they just wanted to go defense to see how much wiggle room they had for attack. Well, and here's the thing too, like we talked about, 
uh, you get a Bastion coming out, no dying, and you get a Hanzo match. coming out that they hadn't seen all match. It's true. So, they did throw it up. I, Actually, I, I think, think almost the entire comp last round was different. Right. Because we yeah. had and we so, had Baptiste for barely a little bit in the first game. Calm swapped to Arissa. I think the only thing we kept was Rius on yep. Ryan. And so they get a completely different comp coming their way. So I think caught off guard and just weren't able to get their feet back underneath them in enough time. We'll see if the chokers are able to take advantage of it. All they have to do now is just not let them complete. All better. I think we're That's already it. prepared for them to have a Bastion based on our Junk Rat. I'm gonna go for a bit of early damage there, just chucking <laughs> the whole time. I always like people that uh, talk about Junk Rat gameplay, where they just sit around a corner and just fire pellets into the air. It's a fun and intriguing gameplay. Hey, what, what works, works. And so you aren't going to have a Bastion on the other side, but you are going to have a Hanzo, so we'll see. Ooh, going to counterpick that Hanzo. Nice. Do oh my gosh. Tobias just taking him out. Nice. Very, very nice. Another one for my Tobias. My goodness. He, he just can't miss, and apparently. So see... Actually, yeah, okay. You, you, see... I've ate... you see why they talked so highly of him in the broadcast yeah. last night. He misses. But then the shots that he hits kill them. <laughs> oh, he was taken out by the other Hanzo there. So that could be a story to watch here on this map. See if we get a lot of Hanzo v Hanzo. Oh, oh they're going to get their alt off. They got three on the cart there. A bit distracted trying to take out this Sigma. He killed himself with his pellets, it looks like. Just that last little bit of damage he had left. Good pick on the junk rat. Not great to walk through his bombs afterwards. But it's okay because we got the revive. Orisa's a bit of a easy target for Hanzo. She's got a really big head and doesn't really have movement ability. You can get your shield up though. That puts you in a pretty good place. Can tell how many the Sigma caught there. Doesn't look like a lot. Gonna try and keep them off the cart, see if we can get some time back, but looks like they're gonna contest it well. Their Hanzo is also doing really well. I think he puts he's, he's a bit of uh, Tobias's nemesis at this point. Good pick there from Tobias taking out the hog while in ult. Bit of an ego match on this Hanzo, I think. <laughs> Not quite gonna get it, though. most importantly here for the Chokers is they're making them use quite a bit of time. Yeah, there's a lot of time wasted here. Just trying to get this point here. Their Hanzo is just very deadly as well. Looks like we're probably going to lose this point here, but we did keep them held back for quite a bit of time. Hopefully we can make up any time lost here on this point. Yeah, so you did good on one of them to be able to make them waste time. you got to have at least one more point that you can make them waste time on here. Because they'll get a little bit more when they get to that next check mark, but already under the time that we finished with. Yeah. Oh, looks like Tobias was finally able to pick. They traded again. I think last time Vence won. This time Tobias won. We should uh, pull up a separate counter. How many times they headshot each other. <laughs> Ooh. Woo. Going for another bit of a Hanzo duel here. There's two games going on. Hanzo v Hanzo and then... Yeah, everybody else. And then Jokers versus Finger Lake. <laughs> yeah. We tried to pre-fire the Hanzo there. He really wants it. There's one ult oh, coming out. Oh, able to at least get out Surely of the he doesn't use his in response. 
Looks like not. I think he saved it. Did I just not see it, or did we not get? Did they not get any eliminations on I that? I don't Hanzo think ult? they got any. It's it's pretty common to see Hanzo's alt not get kills. If you don't have anybody to like stun, keep them in place, push them. Because Hanzo's oh, you alt mean... is pretty easy to dodge normally. But if you're you mean stunned not or in just like a sigma as ult, Tobias is? yeah, 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 <laughs> not everybody's as cracked as Tobias. <laughs> he saves his for a, a rainy day. <laughs> he is just phenomenal at being able to figure out room. You might see it come out here room. in a second. Could be right here in this little choke point. That's what I'm thinking. But it looks like he's gonna save it a little longer. Very nice Ooh. pick on the mercy. That he's not in a great spot there with the junk rat though. Oh, and he's oh. gonna get rolled into for the finish off. Sebast is trying to heal the enemy team now. <laughs> you can get everybody back here. You can possibly 60 seconds be able to left on this right last one. We might be able to hold this point for those last 60 seconds. Very good ult by Rius. Nice. Rius has put up a really good uh, plays. Like, he's gotten a lot better since we first saw him, I think. Yes, for sure. And I, I know in talks of him. And Stepping in new in this season, he he had said that he hadn't been playing as much recently. So I think getting back yeah, into yeah, I think the he's been starting to get it back. He's been doing really well, especially this game and the last game. Yes, very well. And and it's it's been a big difference maker here for the Chokers. Really good oh. early pick there on the Mercy. That's gonna get rid of a revive for them. Going for the ego match again. Yep. With dragons in the back pocket. Oh, neither of them are gonna get it though. Oh, he comes back out. All right, fine. He can let Orblood get the kill. Oh, he pops his ult in the last overtime second there. All they have to do is get this wrecking ball off and let that timer go up. I don't believe any of them are going to get back in time. Nice. Not quite. Very good second match there. It puts us two and two. Woo! Well. Man, I feel like a guru lately when I keep talking about this, but I, I'm just not surprised going into map 5 here. And I'm also not surprised that Bastion is going to play be the playing the game. It's going to be that double kill on the healers. Hold it. Oh my goodness. Does he get the three? I think he gets... I think yeah. he... Oh, he gets four of them. My goodness. Wow. 62% kill participation. Jeez, and Tobias not far behind, picking up a lot of kills with Hanzo. So a, a phenomenal response. We talked about it, we asked for it, and, and ask and ye shall receive, yeah. right? My goodness. Woo. Get Tobias to swap to Hanzo there. Yes, yes, and, and, and that's the thing, is that this, that could be the difference right there. Not only because, like we talked about, was absolutely cracked with Hanzo. Uh, I played a couple of matches with him before this match, actually, and we actually literally had somebody on non-competitive, non-ranked uh, report Tobias and said it in the chat because he said that his aim was very, very suspicious with Hanzo. Uh, so that is a compliment in itself, okay. and you love to see that. <laughs> how how do you aim hack as Hanzo? Like, I, I don't know. They're fast projectiles, but they're projectiles. Like, I don't know if there's a hack unless you're running some sort of, like, crazy AI to predict where people are going to move. I guess so. Maybe he's got wall hacks or something that they're trying to say, but uh, I think he's Well, he does. He has an echolocation in... arrow. Oh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> but he's just put in the time, obviously, with Hanzo. Uh, has been working hard with it, and, and it pays off. And then, so I think it's a little bit of the fact of uh, the great play that you get from Hanzo, the great play that you're getting from Rias right now, uh, the phenomenal heals that you're getting all around, the 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 superb off tank play also from uh, from comms coming that way. I think it was just a really good team effort right there. And then you get Orblin and you tell him to sit on top of the on top of the, the payload with with uh, Bastion and just fire bullets. So really great response. Um, and really big step up, but I, I personally think the play of Rias in these last two rounds have really made the difference for the Chokers yeah, and get I think them Rias into really this been fifth map. Doing really yeah, well. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And so, 
the the nice thing of it too is going into the fifth map with winning the fourth map the chokers get to choose side that they start on um i know that map obviously makes a difference but it doesn't make too big of a difference but i believe that the chokers are probably going to start on defense here um as we've seen every team that's won so far choose defense <laughs> yeah. and it puts them defense in the, in the driver's pick. seat for it real popular it looks like i'm trying to look back through and see if oh they're they're taking a little bit of break i believe mm -hmm. i believe i possibly see in the chat that we might have a pizza order going on that that needs to take a little bit of a break so welcome to the world of esports ladies and gentlemen uh we talk about this so many times i come from <laughs> a really big background of the traditional sports world in athletics uh and i just chuckle at stuff like this that comes up because that would literally never happen like in a baseball game, you can't just go into the dugout and, and take a break and, and call <laughs> the it a Domino's pizza. delivery but... guy walks onto the field, <laughs> gives it to the pitcher. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it, it is the world of esports. They're able to play uh, remotely and all that stuff, so uh, it's a it's a great time. But it, it, we're an hour and a half into Overwatch. It was expected the whole time that it was going to be back and forth, and so we're heading into. We're heading into map five, which could also still end in the tie, correct? This map? Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Cause no, because it's, it's going to be control. Yeah. Right. And so somebody's got to be able to win two points, and so it can't go into a tie. So we've completely taken off the map, map six. So we're not going to get there, but we did make it to map five. Uh, we did have back and forth battle. We're heading into it 2-2. So whoever is able to win control here on, it looks like they chose... Li Zhang Tower, which I'm not sure that they can go back to the same map. That's uh, not the map they did. They did Thank Ilios you for first. picking that up before Li I Zhang put it in the chat. Year. That is yeah. that is correct. So we will go to Li Zhang uh, Tower, which has been the starting map for the last three weeks. Uh, but every three weeks they change that starting map. So Zero just saved me a little bit of embarrassment there. So good catch. Should've good go catch right there. <laughs> Thanks, I really appreciate that. <laughs> but they will go to Li Zhang. I still haven't heard yet. I don't know if you've seen it, but I haven't seen if we're going attack or defense yet. But we're still on attack side. And we're still talking about pizza. Well, everybody wants pizza. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, like we were saying, you're going to go on the Li Zhang Tower and whoever is able to capture two points before the other team captures the two objective points will be your winner of this match so uh, a, a well contested and competitive match the whole way you would expect nothing less than going down they're, to uh, seeing just this last map who can win they're in the match chat questioning the uh, chokers they've never heard of the mascot before <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna give them that one but i'm also going to correct some of the spelling we are the chokers not the chalkers the chalkers uh, like they did they say the chalkers for. yeah yes they did they did say the chalkers um but i'm glad Svass was able to drop it in so hey you know what this could be a great time we've probably got some people watching at home that are wondering or maybe some of our fans and families our friends and family of of some of our players uh Logging community is the most important thing here in Grace Harbor College. We are really built and born on the logging community community here. And the choker is that little metal piece. Actually, it's pretty big that you see that goes around a log uh, with the rope attached to it. And somebody has to literally go and set that that choke in place to be able to pull those logs off. Now we've got a little bit more technology and it's a little bit outdated, but still used. I'm pretty sure the Here choker the is the person that puts the chain. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the choker is the person that actually sets that chain or rope around it and then has to pull that little piece of uh, metal to set the choke on it. And so it is an extremely dangerous job to have to go and do. A lot of times it was on heel sides. You could fall, you could get the tree on top of you, all that kind of stuff. So. It's the most important person in the logging community. Therefore, we are the Chokers. Uh, also, an answer to your question <laughs> about uh, sides. Uh, sides don't matter because it's control point. So, ah. both attacking. Well, you know what? See, I dropped that little tidbit in there to test you, and you passed with Well, 100%, actually, you did so trick well me with done. it. You said it, and then in my brain, I was thinking <laughs> that there's an attack and defense. And then I was looking over, and I was like, wait... That's that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness, the the chat just absolutely popped off while I was looking away. 
It's based. Yep. Facts. Love it. Uh huh. No. Oh. Oh. Okay. Love it. All right. Yeah. The chat got a little interesting there with the chokers. Of, uh, and, and... That was a bit of a copy pasta. It's it's a uh, corpse <laughs> husband song. <laughs> right. If you I saw it, that one, yeah. It, yeah. it is it is not it is not um going towards the the traditional sense of sports of where you could choke something away and choke the lead. And we are the chokers of the logging community, and hopefully the chokers are going to come out and be able to uh imagine to... if that was a name for a team no. the chokers people who just choke the victory <laughs> that would be right? terrible or the little necklace that people wear now yeah the choke there's a lot of chokers apparently yeah. oh, a lot of damage being dealt to the chokers right there I was, I was watching this fast screen over on my, on my uh, game, and all I saw was like the critical logo pop up on like uh, everybody. Right. <laughs> You're gonna have to give me a second here. I'm gonna swap to uh, your cam. Bit of a, a technical issue. Just don't worry about it. I'm gonna groove to the music with you all. Uh, so and as we're hanging on me, there we go. Bam! Love it. But as you can see, Fingerlink was able to capture point first, so it's going to be up to the Chokers to be able to regain that point here. Good hammer down there, but he did get picked off by stepping into that junk rat. What's that perk in Call of Duty? Is it Martyr? The one that drops a nade uh, after you die? Yes, yep. That's, that's a, it's always been an interesting thing that they gave that to junk rat. He just has, like, when he dies, he just drops the explosives. And it's just so weird that they... I, I don't know why. Like, that's been in the game since it started. And it just seems so strange to me. Pretty OP. I don't know anybody else that has, like, those kind of passive abilities. I mean, I suppose there's, like, Hanzo can climb. And Mercy can float. Man, so Finger Lakes is really taking a, a stranglehold here of the first capture point already. Putting up a really good defense here. I think we have three alts we could see. Four now. a bit of a difficult just alt to five. use on this point because of, uh, since it's a giant circle, but he's gonna go for it right here. It did get immediately eaten by the D.Va. If you saw there, the D.Va was just sitting in there waiting for him to do it. I think she saw it coming. Very well done on their part. Not quite able to pick the D.Va before they killed with mech. Gonna try one last push here at the point. And Mercy is in all gonna give a lot of damage out to their team. They still have a junk right up. Still contesting very well. Ooh, Doomfist behind gonna pick off Tobias. Not looking good for us here. Looks like they were able to take the first round down on us. But if you recall, but, well, this is the same thing that happened in the first game. Exactly. Exactly. So hopefully history repeats itself here. Come back with a vengeance. Looks like comms did swap to Zarya. I was wondering if that was going to happen. With all of their uh, AoE splash damage characters they were playing, Azaria would have been really good. Because you can just pop shield and all that splash damage just feeds you energy. And then you just output so much damage. We are going to get Tobias back to Sombra. We're going to get Symmetra on Orblin also. Tobi Tobias is going to swap to Junkrat last second. Symmetra probably to get us on the point. Ooh, got a hiccup. It's just stuck in my throat. And if Chokers see the fact that when they get beat to point, it's pretty tough Ooh. to get finger legs off of it. Tobias gets knocked away off the map, but Orblin is popping off. I believe he's on three now. Four. I think he's, that's his fifth. Very good. Well done by Orblin there to kill five of them, get them off point. 
So we got the capture even, first yeah. this time. I think history is kind of repeating itself. I think this is exactly what happened. And then we got to 85% and then they took it. And then we took it back. Yeah, and I really like this Metro play there because as you saw on the first point, once Finger Lakes was able to get it first, it was pretty hard to get him back off of it. So well, I think they uh, knew that their Metro is also very pa uh, powerful for this point because it's in a smaller room. So all of her gotcha. turrets can hit uh, anybody when they come into the room. You notice he put them above those doorways there? So if people yep. come in the doorways, they get killed there. Zarya is also pretty good for this point because of the you know, small room. Any splash damage can just go into your shield. We are only at 24% and taking down energy. Wasn't quite able to get a lot of energy to do good damage there. It's like going to cap the point back. Or back, I guess. Just cap the point in general. But we're going to group up and go for another... Ooh, Tobias down early. It's not what you like to see. It's like they have a Sombra as well. They were able to take out Svask. That's putting us in a bad place because now we're going to wait here for even longer just for the Sombra to come back around and hack somebody again. And here she comes out, and she hacks. But she wasn't able to quite get the pick this time. Good first pick by Tobias on Clara there. I was a bit confused when it said Tobias next to Clara, because we used to Orgon being Clara. Maybe gonna be able to pick off the Mercy here if she stays near a wall, but it looks like not quite. We did pick off one healer that's looking good, keeping them off point for now. We were able to cap it back. We're pretty even, around 50 50 on the point. I think Orblin might have extended a bit farther than he had intended to, got taken out. By soldier. They're gonna mount another attack on point. Sombra all is gonna stop a lot of damage there. Not great news because that also hacks Sombra's turrets. We're back online. No, nobody else pushed into point. It's interesting. Tobias is gonna all get one, but get taken out immediately after by Sombra. Got their Zarya down, but it's not quite enough. They have too many people on point. I believe we're two healers on point right now. Orblin did make it back, but not quite going to be enough to do it. Going to probably try and regroup. I would not be surprised to see their Sombra come back again. <clears throat> yep, there she is. And she teleports away. Soldier also I going for a bit of a flank. Game for a second. We're at 95 there at like 68. Very, very close so far. That shield is going to give Sombra a lot of charge. Very good ult by their Zarya though. It was enough to take out both tanks. And a healer looks like they're going to push us back. It's going to get very close down to the wire on time here. It's like we're contesting Crunchy and Orblin or Tobias came back in through the point. They're going to try and keep it on. Don't know if we're going to make it back in time now. Not quite able to make it to the point. Very unfortunate. Uh, we were very close to winning that point there. Played a good game all around. This was a very even matchup. Another play of the game by Orglin. I think that's the third one today. Yeah, really <laughs> good play from Orblin the whole time and, and, and really good play from the Chokers, but obviously at the end of the day, just a little bit better play from Fingerlings. It was back and forth battle the whole time. Uh, we go into map five as we talked about and, and going back and forth uh, They capped the first point completely like they did on the first map and then Just 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 barely not able to get the second point and force it to the third one where the chokers uh, But but really a great battle and, and competition all around there
oh sorry i'm looking at sticky notes and stuff over here i don't even know when that sticky note got here but yeah so a lot of good stuff from it uh obviously you would like to see the chokers be able to come out with a victory there but they just weren't quite able Not to quite. and uh yeah, you, you figure out how to bounce back from here. Uh, it puts them to one and four in the NJCAAE. Uh, so it's going to be a very, very big uphill battle for them for the rest of the year in this league. But by ver vice versa, in the other league that they're in, the NECC, you flip that thing around and they're actually four and one over there. Uh, so yeah, it's very two different. worlds right there. Yeah. And I, I think it goes to, to show how much overwatch can be different by one play uh you mm -hmm. you see one play you see one different push uh one different result here in that last map even just for the chokers uh, maybe they're able to capture point first on that first point uh, and it's a whole new world and you see a whole new victor out of it and so the plays have gone the chokers way in the necc and have not gone the chokers way in the njc AAE. so yeah. uh, at least at least you like to see it going one way for you, right? We've had a lot of close games in the NJC as well. Yes, a lot of really great competition. We just haven't been able to finish at the end, uh, which hopefully we're able to turn that around for the rest of the season as this is right about the halfway mark. We got nine weeks, so really, technically, you're kind of in limbo of that halfway mark after the four week mark. Uh, but good showing so far. We hope to see that they can bounce back again next week as they'll be ready to play again at three on next Friday. Uh, but a lot of good stuff. Zero, I think that that was a good good tag team right there. I like having you with it because yeah. as I have mentioned many a times and will be the first to tell you, my Overwatch knowledge is very small. Yeah, so it's well, always I'm just not great at uh, casting. But I know a lot about the games. See? We're going to continue to grow together. So uh, I was born to talk, as everybody can tell, but my knowledge in Overwatch is not there. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but your knowledge of Overwatch is there, and we're going to get better and, and continue to grow and get there and all that kind of stuff. But re really great games all together. So I'm sure it was a great show for all you of you watching yeah. out there. And we will be back in action next week. Obviously, it's the weekend, so go and enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with some Rocket League coming your way. A lot of great stuff coming. And then you're going to have the regular schedule all throughout the week. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in, joining with us, having a lot of fun with us. And as always, we will see you all next time.